Greetings to you and welcome to you. I'm uh, Bishop Kirby Clements. I'm the presiding leader of the International Communion of Charismatic Churches. Uh, it's a, a group of men and women globally that began in 1978. And it was an effort that we do believe of the Spirit to uh, recognize that the body of Christ is one. All I knew about ICCC is that at Bishop Park, at uh, Bishop Mayor John Mayers, Bishop Meshagin, Bishop McAllister from Brazil, they all got together, and my husband, with a bishop from Jamaica, Bishop Harold Blair. They all got together and they were discussing, this is what I can recollect, they were discussing uh, about dialoguing with the Pope and that dialoguing is better than confrontation. That's all I heard about, about that and they held their meeting and they dispatched. Few, few months later, they were in Benin, in my, in my country, Nigeria, to elevate my husband as an archbishop. And after the elevation, few months later, we came over to um, Atlanta. And there they had their first meeting. It was held in a hotel. I don't even, I can't recollect the, the, the name of the hotel. And there they sat down, they discussed at length with all their wives behind. But this is all I can recollect about the formation of ICCC. In 1995, when uh, Bishop, the then Bishop Benson Idahosa began talking to me about being consecrated as a bishop, uh, I, I, was, I was hesitant. My life has been evangelism. And I didn't quite understand what this meant. And uh, gradually, in fact, through the prophetic visit of our now presiding bishop, Archbishop uh, Clements, he convinced me that this was something God would use to open doors and expand my influence in the work of God. So in, in 1997, when I became involved with the ICCC, I was consecrated. I did it on one condition, and that's that I would be consecrated in Nigeria with my friend and brother, uh, the late Benson Idahosa. And so my father actually came to Nigeria and was part of this consecration, and it was a tremendous experience. I began to understand the impact of the ICCC, its purpose, its vision, and its lasting impact in nations all over the world. Are you ready to receive him? Now listen to me. I want to pray for those who have never asked Jesus to come into their heart. I see us as a tremendous umbrella and a gathering place for ministries and churches and leaders all over the world. Unity is God's plan. And to me, well, there are certain doctrinal things that we may embrace. The ICCC is not a doctrinally based uh, communion. We are focused on Jesus Christ, His gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth.
the global significance of the ICC, which is a very interesting point, I do believe, uh, had to be a biblical one. Uh, it had to be the belief that we believe that uh, Christ is not divided and the body of Christ is one. Now we have differences of opinion, but uh, we sought to create dialogue and create points of interest, points of concern around which all of these denominations could navigate, not just in the United States, but around the world. So there were things that we took upon ourselves, such as uh, uh, sometimes poverty, uh, such as uh, a lack of knowledge and understanding of, uh, of Scripture, sound doctrine among the churches, uh, the building of schools, good schools that can educate people, and teaching ministries around the world to be more effective, more productive, to affect and to influence, number one, that, that community. So in terms of its global influence, I do believe that it was biblical. Not trendy, not trendy. Anything that is global, number one, must be transcendent. And ours was to show that the body of Christ is one and to create dialogue which precipitated strong schools, strong churches, and also something wonderful that I always believe in, and embrace the idea of the co-equality of men and women. That's something that needs to be embraced globally. The message of the kingdom of God is eternal. It, the only reason that it's called a message is because we've just discovered its reality. The theological agenda of the ICC has been and always shall be the proclamation and the demonstration of the principles and the reality, not just a uh, concept or a theological uh, theory, but the reality of God and His kingdom. And as, as far as you can see, backwards or forwards, you're going to find the kingdom of God because God is eternal and so is His, His righteous rule in heaven and on earth. And what we realize is that when the church realizes the, the understanding of the kingdom of God, it's like a fire in our bones. We can't stop but just uh, to, to proclaim it and to speak its, its relative truth. It's from Genesis to Revelation you'll find that message. And what the message of the kingdom did was it ignited pastors and bishops globally. And the ICCC wrote doc documents, the, uh, uh, the uh, books and, and recordings and things such as this that helped people to understand it. And it went global like fire in our bones. It really did. And what we have to understand is that this message moves the church from passivity into a point of action. And that's exciting to pastors and bishops and churches. We aren't just uh, for personal evangelism only, certainly it includes that, but also we are a witness in dark kingdoms. We're a light of the world, that's what Jesus called us. We know where we are coming from, that ICCC was forming with, with, with these five generals, God's general. And uh, when, my, when my husband passed, Archbishop El Pork with some other bishops came to Nigeria and they put me in position and consecrated me the bishop of the ministry. And so I came into position. Uh, I mean, looking at my background, uh, women were not, I mean, I, I had not seen any woman consecrated a bishop or called a bishop. And uh, I was put in place. I couldn't resist it. I couldn't say no because if I had said no, it means somebody else would be put. So I, uh, I just accepted. But deep down me, I was thinking, what do I do now? So I went into my closet and prayed. And God told me, Margaret, if I make the appointment, I will definitely uh, uh, give you the support and do all that is necessary. I said, OK, if you make the appointment, you will release the ability to perform. And I said, oh, OK, God, we, have, we are here. And then I asked another question. I said, God, don't you know that I'm a woman? I'm a woman in a man's world. He said, oh, I didn't know that you are a woman. I thought I made you in my own image. And I said, oh, God, I thank you that I'm your image. And whatever I, I, I want to see myself just as you see me. And God spoke to my ear and said, Margaret, I am not gender specific. The time when uh, ICC had the first major crisis, uh, Archbishop uh, Kirby Clements, really, he, he continued to be that support and he felt God wanted him to remain in that setting with Archbishop uh, Alper, and that leadership was passed to uh, Archbishop Hoskins. 
at that point in time, uh, my involvement, uh, traveling, other issues, really did not play that part as I, as I sh could have, you know. But I felt that the, the life of the ICC was still going on because there was some degree of uh, involvement, but not to the magnitude of the involvement. Uh, that second crisis really uh, brought on the scene. Archbishop Kirby Clements, and it's uh, it's strategic to understand how all of that came into place, and uh, that really came into place uh, through uh, after at, at the home going of Archbishop uh, Archbishop Hoskins. Uh, Archbishop Margaret calls everyone together. I'm not a part of the college, but I'm close connected to her, and I'm close to connected to Archbishop Kirby Clements. And so we need to we need to hear God's voice and who's supposed to lead. Uh, about this, and, and, and she strongly, because in the scheme of things, she was supposed to, she was the vice president. But unbeknownst to her, there were changes that she didn't know that was made. So she really officially was no longer holding that position, but she had no knowledge that she wasn't in that position. So she was still speaking from previous knowledge. And so she advocated strongly as the next voice, and after much deliberation, Archbishop uh, Kirby Clemens became the next leader. And I felt that the time appointed, and he want he he demanded that Archbishop Margaret come alongside, which in that discussion was healthy for ICCC. Because after these two crises, you need two leaders of great integrity now that can navigate through those waters of of crises that we have to bring the organization to some level of backing of integrity and standing. So God give us these two leaders who helped us to navigate through all of this through much challenges to bring ICCC in. And we've now seen a, a new style of leadership because as Archbishop Kirby come, Clemens comes in, his leadership style is different. And, and he, he, he brings more involvement now. And, and so that brings a lot of people on board, new leaders, people getting involved. And, he, and you begin to see an uh, organization emerging that has this impact that's ready to make a difference globally. It was a fall day and we were called to a hotel conference room uh, in Atlanta at the airport. And there we had the difficult decision of what we were going to do with the crisis that we were presently in. And that being the allegations were found to be true that uh, Bishop Earl Polk, Archbishop Earl Polk, um, had had some challenges and it was apparent that the ICC could no longer um, continue with his leadership. So we had the difficult decision to decide what we were going to do and it was decided that we would part ways. And one, David Huskins was in that meeting, was given the challenge, uh, the responsibility I should say, of delivering the uh, message to Archbishop Earl Polk. Um, and so we move from there to now we're faced with new leadership. And uh, Archbishop David Huskins is now the new presiding bishop. We uh, have the challenge with, we got a, n a new bishop, Archbishop David Huskins, and then we have another crisis soon thereafter that he's the presider. And I'm sitting uh, at his church uh, in Cedartown, Georgia, at, at his funeral. A very difficult, very difficult and sad day for the body of Christ. And so we said so long to him, and now we need new leadership. And now who is to head ICCC? There was commotion, there was trouble, there was problem, there was lobbying here and there. And they came and said, listen, what God has put in our hand, we should not allow it to die or to perish. And I said, okay, no problem. Personally, I believe God that ICCC is of God because ICCC is not only an American thing or an African thing. It was a global thing that God has given unto us. And I have never heard of anything that involves the six continents. And I said, okay, let's, uh, let's do it. So we came 
and we met and uh, we, ha we have to we have to actually begged uh, uh, Archbishop Kirby Clement to lead because he was he, he was at the beginning of ICCC and so he he agreed and ever since we've seen it coming up gradually and growing and growing and growing. As new people are coming in, advocating, bringing their new ideas, you know, uh, 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 bringing new initiatives and, and really addressing concerns. And I begin to see ICC continues to evolve as an organization that will maintain its relevance through understanding the needs of those that it serve and the global perspective. We wanted to kind of talk about how uh, Africa or African nations have fared in the midst of this pandemic. It, it has been quite um, challenging because um, it has uh, challenged um, uh, our, our settings, of, uh, our church setting. It has challenged um, the way we do church, the way we see church, the way we respond to the community. It has challenged everything. So when it all started, we're thinking this is something that in a few months is going to be over. Yeah. But we're realizing that this is going nowhere. And what it has imposed on us is literally becoming like the new normal. Nigeria is, uh, is really ahead in, uh, in Africa in terms of technology. And so we already had the platforms and the structure for the online uh, internet uh, 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 services. So a lot of people just understood and they started watching online. Let me tell you something simple. Booking this particular program and considering the various time zones, and I actually blew it because I gave you guys the wrong time zone because I calculated based on the East Coast time. Then I had to come back and then send you information to bring you back onto the Central time calculation. Then I got Bishop Nikki, she's two hours behind me. This is globalization. You're six hours ahead, she's two hours behind, Bishop's an hour ahead. So it, it's, it can be daunting, but it's stretching us and making us think in global ways like we've never done before. We have over 15 churches in Gabon and um, in Congo, they, they don't have this uh, Zoom ability that we have and uh, they don't have the finances to maintain the data all, all across the villages where they have churches. It's a real time of test uh, of the work that we've been doing because in some remote areas, uh, we have to entrust those people like up north, above the polar circle areas, when people live in Tundra, we have to trust God and entrust those people to God. And which, which uh, reminds me of what, you know, Apostle Paul was doing. The benefit to me, the blessing in being a part is that I've had the opportunity to hear things that was helped me as both an entrepreneur and a ministry leader. And uh, this community of, of leaders has been impactful to me, has been a resource to me, has helped me to really begin to see my role in leadership in both business and ministry uh, and create a, a level of impact so that I'm able to be effective in what it is I'm called to do. I'm grateful for the privilege to be connected. And I believe that the ICCC is going in a direction where it will be able to impact leaders on all levels, multiple generations, as well as from different cultural backgrounds. The ICC, when I came along back in the 90s, was all iconic figures that were bigger than life. And really, um, the emerging generation came, set, listened, but never had a a uh, voice and never were allowed to participate. And I see the ICC turning that corner uh, where we're hearing this next generation, not only hearing, but considering and reasoning with them and then uh, incorporating some of their concerns uh, in the culture of the ICC. Credibility has come back and the name ICC uh, has weight to it around the world, and we have a global constituency that's 
uh, coming in here and feeling like I feel. This is a place we can learn, grow, and hear God and make sure that what we say we're hearing is consistent with the voice of God amongst other leaders around the world. I see ICCC putting all, all these people together to speak to the world so that the world can know that the gospel is not just for the old, the gospel is not just for the middle age, the gospel is not just for the uh, uh, upcoming generation, the gospel is a whole and it involves everyone that is here. So I believe that the best of ICCC is yet to come. Our vision of the ICC, first of all, obviously is to be transcendent, that's first of all, to embrace all people. It is to provide what I consider revelation and information to make uh, the ministries more effective, more productive. It is also to be a place of uh, what I call confidentiality, uh, where leaders, when they falter or whatever happens, it's a place of confidentiality so there can be restoration. It is a place where we can come together, regardless of our, our race, our creed, our culture, and dialogue around significant issues. So our future thing is to provide information and revelation and strategies. One of the things that's been missing, I do believe, with all of the revelation was a lack of a functional strategy. We need to provide strategies to facilitate the things that God has given us to do. And I think that uh, this is the future idea of it. Uh, we'll have conferences, we we'll use our, our technology. We want to make sure we use that because we've discovered today that you can have information without transfer pay, transformation. You don't have to go. So we're going to use the technology to reach the globe, reach the world. And we're doing that today. And I like the idea that we're involving the young and the old. In a day where there's a prefabrication of a false division. The ICC will facilitate a strategy that brings them together. And to bring them together, you have to allow them, not only them to come together, but them to also to procreate. They have to come together and also to be productive. So our idea in the future of the ICC, still a little bit, we have, um, I won't say de-emphasized uh, the liturgical piece, the office of bishop, but we have to recognize that uh, all gifts are equal in terms of their uh, value. They differ in terms of their function. So it is not, will not be an Episcopal organization, one that embraces all, even the marketplace, because that's where the work in the ministry of God is done. And also I think we'll address fundamental issues, social political issues, because the church is called to do that. We must equip leaders to have an articulation that can address issues without creating the kind of offense that turns people off. So it is a, um, I say, a pregnant future that it's impossible for me to articulate all of it right now, but I'm excited about it. And I do believe that God is with us and our emphasis at always will be the kingdom of God and the person and ministry of the Holy Ghost. Because whenever the church has been effective, that has been the focus of the person and ministry of the Holy Ghost. So this is our future thing, I-C-C-C, operative word, church, charismatic. You've got to believe in that. <laughs>